one of the lessons I have taught over and over and over, like the judgment seat of Christ, the crowns of Christians, I have taught the virtuous woman several times. It's an interesting study about womanhood. And Proverbs 31.10 is where we find this virtuous woman. <coughs> Forgive me. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. She's a pure, rare, wise woman. 2 Samuel 20, verse 16. She's very valuable. She's priceless. Now, as we go in this list, you, get, you may ask, so am I supposed to be 100%? The Bible says, God says, be holy for I am holy. God is perfect. And yet we're sinners. All have sinned and come to short of glory of God. And when we don't come perfect, be perfect, for I am perfect. We have 1 John 1, 9. We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We're supposed to strive to be what the Bible expects us to be. It pictures Ruth and Rebecca as we've already previous study. Virtuous is pure, rare, wise. So this is not going to be every woman you say. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Her husband trusts in her. It's a heart condition. The Bible speaks much about heart and not head. Salvation according to Romans 10 is of the heart. Atheism according to Psalms, is of the heart. The husband, his heart, and not, you know, drawing the picture of the heart, and, uh, no, it's his true feelings with inside. The character is who you are when no one else is around to see you. You must be able to be, re to be reliable with all things in the marriage life. That the woman's husband, you'll trust her. You can trust her with a checkbook. You can trust her with the finance. You can trust her being home. And no need to spoil. You won't desire material things. You may need material things, but they're not going to be your bounty. As we study 1 Corinthians 7, you you know you are human. You have needs. But you ought not to overdress those needs. You ought not to be over your finances. You ought to be content. And do not outspend the income of the home you live in. That's very important. She will do she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. And it's being faithful. And that's what the Christian should be to God in the Lord Jesus Christ. That verse right there. She, bride. The virtuous wife we're the bride of Christ we're supposed to be doing good and never evil every single day of our life but thank God for first John 1 9 and what is the opposite of God according to Proverbs 15 3 it is evil it says good not the best it don't say best It says good. You're not going to be 100%. Put your good into it. Let your good be the best you can. And of her life, the wife may die before the husband. All the days of her life, he may outlive. So every single day that she lives as a wife, she should be good. She seeth wool and facts and worketh willingly, willingly with her hands. Now wool, in addition to clothing, wool has been used for blankets. Now look how far this spreads out here. Horse rugs, saddle cloths, carpeting, felt, wool installation, upholstery, wool felt covers, piano hammers. It's also used as absorb odors and noise and heavy machinery and stereo speakers which they wouldn't have back then cloth diapers and underwear 
Look at the stuff that she's in charge of. Just by wool. The flax. The best grades are used for linen fabrics such as uh, damask, D-A-M-A-S-K-S, -S, lace, and sheeting. Coarser grades are used for the manufacture of twine and rope, and historically for canvas and webbing equipment. Fa uh, flax fiber is a raw material used in the high quality paper industry for the use of printing banknotes and rolling paper for cigarettes I forget to say it, and tea bags. Well, look how handy she is with this the words wool and flax. You're going from clothing to carpet to carpets to hangings to tea bags to lace sheetings. And she does it willingly. She's a handy woman. Any man that says a housewife job is not hard does not know what goes on in the house. Willingly. It's a free will. Cheerfully. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. Merchant. Imports and exports goods. There is no limit to her resources. There's your verse for groceries. She goes out grocery shopping and she brings them. A far being she goes out into the public. She's not just bound to home. She's got to go in the marketplaces. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. The Jewish night was 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. As Proverbs is written, a baby will wake her up anytime. Luke 12 42, she feeds her household, her husband, and her children, along with Proverbs 31. Her maidens are her servants, so she's got people helping her in the house. There is no starvation in that house. She controls the diet for the good. 3112. Remember we talked about she will do good and not evil of the family. She will do things that are healthy in that house. She will do things for her conscience in that house. The care of that house. And it's not about her. It's the good woman and unselfish love that she has for her family. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She's wise in real estate. Now you wouldn't think that you know in the Bible that a woman would be so good. She considers it. Is it a deal? Is it worth it? Is it for the good? Thirty-one twelve again. There's that good. Notice how many times good shows up. Again. Not perfect, not the best, the good. She, <coughs> excuse me. She buyeth it cash, I assume, without the husband. She can make transactions without the husband being there. Now, the way we study with the Bible, she she's talked to her husband about this. She's wise. She sought other people. She, it's not just walk up. Okay, okay. I like the field. Here's the money. Then she turns the field into produce. Here a vineyard. She planted. She has, she has already, from verse 10, has already had much to do. And now she's adding to it. She's going to bring grapes, raisins, and wine into her home with this vineyard. She girls up her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. She's strong. She's got muscles. She's got to carry a baby. She's got to carry groceries. And with those activities, she makes herself stronger. Being a woman in a house, household choice. Uh, Rebecca says that well. She went down to the well. Well, when she filled that pitcher up, she's got to carry it up that builds muscles that builds legs that's why some of these people in the bible you know you really think about them 
they were strong. We don't think about how strong they are, but look at the things they had to do. Peter and, and James and John would have to pull nets full of fish. They had muscles. First Peter three seven. She's emotionally, not physically. She's the weaker vessel, but she's got strength. But things make her upset. Anyone who can carry groceries, babies, clean supplies, bend and stretch. Uh, reach, climb, etc. There is no need for a gym membership for this woman. Gym membership shows a lack of one's duties. If a woman's got to go to the gym, she ain't taking care of the house like she's supposed to. 3118. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goes out, goes not out by night. She checks values, size, shape, expiration, coupons. There's that good again. Supplies are not exhausted. There is no reaching for an empty space in her home. Now notice her merchandise. Notice what she's doing. She's buying the field. She's making. She's working. She has a job, and no man is above her but her husband. There's no man outside of her husband telling her what to do. And yet she, she's got merchandise. She's got produce. She's got all kinds of goods. And we're going to see in a moment she's going to deal with those with the public. She's going to go and have a business. But she doesn't have any man over her but her husband. Now 3119, she lays her hands to the spindle. Her hands hold on the distaff. Now that's a spinning wheel. That's all I can say about that. <coughs> but here is a woman in a time when you didn't have big stores. She made her own yarn to make sweaters and things. She would take the raw material off the horse, off the, off the animals, and then make it useful. More work upon this woman. As we go more and more and more in these verses and, and keep going these verses, this woman is hard working. She's harder working. She's hardest working. And she's good. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She's charitable, but she's wise. She offers foods, foods and goods and never money. Because you can use money for something else that you know you shouldn't be using it. Stretch that reaches out beyond, goes to, leaves the house. Out. Stretches when you reach out. Her hands, her fingers are doing the work. <coughs> She's a handy woman again. Knows how that keeps showing up. She's using her hands. 21. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. And all her household is clothed with scarlet. Cold doesn't frighten her. Her, home, her family will be warm. The clothing, the wood, the meals are all provided by her again. Husband is out in the workplace somewhere. Who's going to bring the wood in? Who's going to make sure the wood comes in? Well, if she's got children, she's going to make sure they do their chores. And that wood box gets filled. She's going to make sure that the girls have gone down and got the water needed for the meals and cleaning. So now she's not only a hard worker, but she's also a manager in the house. She's making sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. She's leaving no job unfinished. Scarlet is a very expensive red purple color. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. She doesn't buy. She makes. Husband's given her great clothes for a good wife. She's not shabby. She's not baggy. She's not an old maid. Her husband has taken. Should. Let me say that. Her husband should take care of her and make sure she's got the best clothes that she's got on. 
and in her closets. You ought not be complaining. 3124, so the Bible says that the husband, he says he's, he's told to love her, and we're told by these two verses among the virtuous woman, give her her clothes. Give her something good and colorful. Her husband is known, 24, talk about the husband here, but 24, she maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. She makes extra and she sells. 3114, she imports. 3114, she exports the merchants. A merchant sells and buys. That's exactly what she's doing. She's in the market business. She's making money. She's earning an income with no male boss over her. The only man that's in the authority of her is her husband. Now she goes down to the marketplace and there's a guy buying her girdles. And he's like, you know, he's trying to take control of the situation. You know what she does? Fine, you don't get my girdles. Go. I'm done. I'm not going to be under you. My girdles are a certain price for a certain amount. You want to do anything than that? I'm not doing business with you. So she would be a firm woman. She would be a fair woman. And she wouldn't be out to cheat anybody as a virtuous, pure woman that she is. She's going to give them a good deal for what she has. She's on her own time clock. When she has the time, she goes down. When she's got the availability of here, the girdles. She's got extra girdle. When she's got the time, then she'll go down in the marketplace or her neighbors will come to her. I mean, she'll have a, this could be a Tupperware party. This could be <coughs> an eBay. She's making money with what she has extra. The virtuous woman has, has first work at home business and she has a marketplace business so yes a woman can go out and get a job and does not need any man over her she has to be well known by others to be in business 3111 trustworthy to her husband and others what she sells it's got to be a good quality or they wouldn't buy it anymore. What she buys has to be a good quality. And getting a good price from the person selling it. She has to do honest business deals. Because when we see that she's to be praised by God, would God praise any woman who is dishonest? I throw not. She's got a good head on her shoulders. She is resourceful. And when it comes to money issues, she knows how to use income wisely. She knows, applies, and understands the value. It would have been a dollar back then, but the dollar today. Earns income righteously, again, to be praised by God, we see in verse 30. So she's got to be doing it right. She never cheats, swindles in the market. That would give her a bad name. Her husband is known in the gates. Well, if she was a terrible businesswoman, oh yeah, her husband would be known in the gate. Yeah, yeah, wife swindles us. You know, she, she sells blueberries and there's bad berries on the bottom, but good ones on the top. She's fair and honest to be a virtual woman. Proper handling of. She knows her withdrawals. She had extra. She knows her deposits, what's coming in. She knows the stock of her shelves. It all comes out balanced in the end by this woman. There's no waste but extra. Coupon savings, sales to the family advantage. She's not doing it for herself. She's doing it for her entire family. And she has no fear because with what she gets, she makes sure they have the clothing, they have the needs, they're full, and they're healthy full. 25. 
strength and honor are in her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come strong again look at that good faithful honorable those are characteristics of a proper godly woman in the Bible they are found in the early Rebecca they are found in Ruth and Mary Mary strong that she can take a they say well we don't say donkey ride but she took a ride all the way down to Bethlehem carrying the baby Jesus when it came to the near end of trimester she was faithful of God to be used she was good of God <coughs> to be used and faithful to what God has said to her 26 she opens her mouth with wisdom in her tongue is the law of kindness she speaks wisdom and the counter to that was Eve and Jezebel Eve changed the Bible Jezebel just thought of herself Jezebel caused people to be killed she caused her prophets to succeed and the prophets of God to be put away she has a kind mouth it's never a foul mouth it's never a fight or an attitude mouth no sarcasm comes out of her mouth she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness her household her husband and her children and no others because it said over here she rises also while it's yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maiden her household comes first before the servants her husband and then her children the Bible order before helping the poor 3120 before the merchant 3124 in her house first is her husband first as Paul prescribed then her children there's no idleness no days of graves death to hospital it's no sewage she has no time to be idle she has no time for those television soap operas and those television shows there's no time today we got the modern conveniences of electricity and and appliances and all that has given us all kinds of idle trying and we are a nation of idleness as Sodom and Gomorrah was her children rise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praises her success is the praise when her children speak well of her and her husband speaks well of her that's the success of this woman if he gripes and complains about her and the children don't want there's something lacking according to the scriptures many daughters have done virtuously so there are daughters that are virtuous but thou excellest them all she is the best to her husband husbands should have a competition about their wife my wife's the best no my wife no my wife's the best <coughs> but the eyes of her husband she should be the only one there may be other women out there other wives that are hard working but you know what the Bible says husbands love your wives there ought to be nobody else like your wife it's not how mom used to do it 30 favors the sequel and beauty is vain but a woman that fears the Lord she shall be praised fear the Lord when we were in Ephesians they that fear the Lord together you must fear God before the marriage fear the Lord is what's needed for a woman fear the Lord is what's needed for a husband 
for a successful marriage. This is why 31, 10 to 31, she cannot ever be a virtuous woman and she does not fear God. That has got to be the number one characteristic of her whole entire life besides all what she's done. What if she can't do any, some of this stuff or all these things because of a handicap? But if she can fear the Lord and not trust in her beauty, as the scripture just said, God is love. And God will teach her to love by the fruit of the Spirit. And Galatians 5.22 are the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit individual love <clears throat> the love she will need will come from God if she fears the Lord we as human do not know what love is because we do not know God for God is love we were of our father Satan who was a liar and a murderer joy living with a man she will need extreme external joy that will come by God. That's also a fruit of the Spirit. If she does what she's supposed to do in her marriage by fearing God, by loving God, and doing what is expected of her, the fruit of the Spirit will come in her life. Peace. The man and husband, bad children, and the peace of God. Husband sick, in bed, can't get right child sick made the creditors at the door peace long suffering these are the fruit of the spirit remember Paul said there will be fights in a marriage if you will fear God and do right God will grant you sanity he'll grant you not know, just stretch it out get over it get back gentleness how else would you describe this woman a mother and a, and a wife there are women today out in the workplace she's anything but gentle man she's got tattoos up and down her she's got a foul mouth cussing mouth she's just as strong nothing makes me more sicker than to see a woman that's a, a body lifter that just does not go you're just ugly disgusting looking get off my television but a gentle woman when she's she's got a loving child in her arms Gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit. Goodness. Remember the goods that we looked at in Proverbs 31? Those goods that we've seen from this woman comes from the sixth fruit of the Spirit. And it has to come from God. Faith. <coughs> Blessed hope in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. With laundry, broken stoves, dirty shower, and a stinky husband. She's got to look at something better. She's got to look to the Lord Jesus Christ. She's got to look at these dishes. Got to be something better coming. The Lord Jesus Christ. Meekness. To be a sweetheart and not a sour tart. The Proverbs speak about a contentions of a woman as a drippy, as a drip that just drip 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 no you just be humble be nice and then the last fruit is temperance do not let your anger flume to the boiling point keep calm cool calm cool fear the Lord and trust and obey you guys step away favor is deceitful and beauty is vain beauty can be lost Beauty can get old. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. What if her husband doesn't praise her? What if her children don't praise her? I bet you one day the Lord will. I bet you the Lord will lift her, lift her up at the judgment. And there are women out there who have rotten, terrible husbands. I can see God now calling the wife and the husband up and saying, you know, how dare you treat that woman like that? 
Well, let me give her the praise that you had all your life. Give her the fruit of her hands. She has needs. And let her own works praise her in the gates. As I've already said, she's a merchant in the city. If she's honest, if she's right, if she's fair, man, people are going to want to do business with this woman. They're going to want to, hey, where's that virtuous woman in the gates? Where is she? I want to do business with her because she's great. And we'll just stop right there. The virtuous woman. A virtuous woman that loves the Lord. And I tell you, when I think of Mrs. Holt, that woman was a virtuous woman that loved the Lord and her family. And she loves where she is with her husband serving the Lord, the people of Sierra Leone. And a great help me.